Hi everyone, I'm Anne Marie from Brambleberry.com. Thanks so much for joining me on today's video. We are going to do a slightly advanced cold process recipe that is so delicious smelling, amazing looking, and is sure to be a crowd pleaser. This limoncello soap was inspired by our Bella Vita collection, which is a wonderful collection of fragrances that are designed to transport you to Italy through scent. And for this particular recipe, we're using one of our quick mixes, which makes it really easy to make. And we're gonna be doing some embeds with Brambleberry's Melt and Pour Soap. So we're using the Brambleberry Italian Limoncello fragrance, and this does not smell like a lemon tart. It doesn't smell like, well, a, you know, cleaner. It really truly smells like a limoncello, a really luscious, deep, lemony fragrance with a little bit of bergamot in there. Best of all, it doesn't discolor and it behaves beautifully in soap. This soap does require just a little bit of prep to make these cute little lemon embeds or toppers. And the way we make them is we choose a low sweat melt and pour soap. What does that mean? Regular melt and pour soap has added glycerin in it to make it melt down cleanly and clearly. This particular low sweat melt and pour soap takes out that added glycerin so there's no moisture that is drawn to the top of the soap because you know what glycerin is? It's a humectant, which is a fancy word for draws moisture to itself. So the like cold process low sweat melt and pour is essential to make for your toppers. We're just gonna melt two ounces of it in the microwave and then color it with the yellow mica block from Brambleberry and then toss that in the microwave for just about 30 seconds. It melts down pretty quickly. Then we're pouring this into the Brambleberry nine ball silicone mold, allowing it to harden, which takes about eh, 30 minutes, popping these out and then they're ready to use. So other things you wanna have ready to go are your fragrances measured, your colorants prepped, and of course, we are gonna use a little piping bag to pipe these really cute leaves on for a final perfect touch. So have a piping bag ready to go as well. So now that everything's prepped, we are ready to make some soap. You will notice I am suited up for safety. That means long sleeves, long pants, closed toed shoes, children and pets in another area, well ventilated area gloves and goggles because we only get one set of eyes. Quick mix is melted and I have my lye water prepared. My lye water, crucially, has sodium lactate in it which will help this entire bar harden up more quickly. I'm gonna pour my lye water into my soap, I'm just pouring gently down the shaft of the stick blender to ensure that there's less bubbles that form. I am a stickler for bubbles in my soap because it's just an aesthetic thing. We're doing a really cool drop swirl design today and I want every single swirl to really show. So now that the lye water is in, it's time to give this a quick stir and a stick blend. You can see as the white moves up the side that we're starting to emulsify that soap, meaning this, the lye water and the oils are mixing together. And for this particular recipe, we're looking for a thin trace because we're going to be doing some swirling. Uh, so you're gonna want to watch this really closely. You're watching for color. You're watching for trailings. So we're gonna do about 600 milliliters into this for the yellow. just pouring gently into here. We're gonna stop at 600 milliliters and I'm really looking at my texture right now to make sure that my trace is sticking around. It's looking just a little bit grainy so I'll give it a, I'll give it a quick whirl with a whisk in just a minute. And, but no more stick blending because I already have this is thick enough trace. We're just gonna do about two ounces in here. And this is again for your green so that you're gonna pipe those, those uh, leaves on. That's optional. You don't have to do the leaves, but I think it's a great touch. I'm just gonna add that and I'm just gonna do a tiny little bit of mixing here. It's a good green. We want that green to really show up. So, and I'm using one of Brambleberry's little easy mixers. And we're gonna pour this directly into this bag right here. This is my piping bag. It's a regular piping bag that you use for icing because I want this to set up for the entire time. It's gonna take probably about 10 minutes to set up to get to that consistency that we want. And this is by far enough here. We're gonna have extra left over and I'll show you later what we can do with that. 
and I'm going to set that to the side, far away so I don't knock it over. And now we're ready to work with our titanium dioxide and our yellow. So the titanium dioxide is going to set up faster than the yellow one, so I'm going to start with the yellow. This yellow mica from Brambleberry is what you see is what you get. So we're just going to eyeball this, give it a whisk, and then I still need to add my fragrance, so let's not forget that. And if this is enough yellow, and it looks like enough yellow to provide good contrast because we're looking for a nice, beautiful, subtle contrast and we're done with that. And I'm gonna go ahead and add my fragrance last to both of these. And then this is a titanium dioxide. Titanium dioxide has been pre-mixed. It is an all natural colorant and it sometimes can accelerate trace just a teensy, teensy little bit. That's why I added it last. So in this case, I went with three teaspoons of my blended up colorant and I'm just going to whisk that in. Again, I don't want to be stick blending at this point because I need my trace to stay really nice and thin. And then finally it's time to add the fragrance. So we're going to do about two thirds to the white and we're going to do about one third of that fragrance to the yellow. Just going to stick blend it in really well. And we need to remember that we're saving some white soap for the very end to mound up on the top of the bars. You see how we've got that mounted up at the very top? So keep that in mind when you're doing your design. So now looking at this, I'm just gonna quick just check it out. Yeah, this is a beautiful, really light medium to, it's pretty much a light, light, light medium trace. It's not a light trace because I can see thin trailings but it's not at all hitting the medium trace. So we're just gonna do basically a layer, cover the whole bottom, and then we're doing a drop swirl. So a drop swirl simply means swirling in the mold and you do varying low to high so that way you get some really cool natural swirls that happen. Next one, and so you can see I'm actually swirling as I pour. And then here is where the magic happens with this really gorgeous kind of long spigot. You want the drops to just go and go and just do their natural swirl. And then here, and remember we're saving the white for the end. So I got to save a little bit of white to mound. So there we go. We're done with that. And then really high up, really high up, breakthrough. And we don't need to save any of this yellow because well, we're going to mound white on the top and then finish that off with just a little bit of sparkle gold mica. And we never want to waste any soap, so I'm just going to spatula this right out just a little bit. Just another, just a tiny little bit. It also makes cleanup easier. So now is the time we wait a little bit. Since we did pour at that kind of thin to medium trace, it's time to clean up. I'm going to keep all my safety gear on to clean up though because this soap is now a lot more gentle it can still burn you. So all the safety gear stays on as I just clean up while I wait for this to harden and this to harden so it will mound. Plus, don't forget, we have the green soap to pipe on as well. So I've been waiting for probably ah, three to five minutes at this point. And what I'm waiting for is I want to mound this up in the middle. You can see how nice and hard this has gotten. So we're just gonna mound this up because the look of the bars is to have a mounded top. So when I spoon my white over as kind of a cool textured frosting, I want to give it something to kind of hold on to. So we're just mounding up in the middle and not doing too much, just enough. Although it's so fun to play with wet soap that I kind of just want to keep playing. But here we go. So mounded. So we're going for pillows and clouds. So I'm just gonna use kind of a, a tablespoon and I'm just gonna start here and we're gonna go all the way down the middle so that way we get we make sure that our pillows and clouds are in the middle and then we'll start to kind of fill in the sides and we still can manipulate this. That's the glory of this quick mix is there's lots of time to manipulate that coupled with the fragrance working so well in here. So we have some pillows and clouds and we're gonna keep going on those pillows and clouds now. Be thinking texture and know that no matter what your design looks, it always is going to be beautiful soap in the end. And so you don't have to be too perfect with this. Then we also have our little lemon toppers we're gonna put on here too. So there's gonna be a lot of components that go into making this soap. Oh, that was fun. It's gonna be a lot of components that go into making the soap, the beautiful final product that you did see. So here we go. We have our 
beautiful clouds. Ah, so it's just gorgeous. It really makes me want a lemony drink with maybe like some whipped egg whites on top. So something real fancy right now. So while it's really tempting to keep playing with this because playing with wet soap is truly a joy, I'm gonna do the gold ultra sparkle mica on top here. And I'm just gonna, I'm still suited up for safety. So I'm just gonna droop on the top. And that's just really just for some interest. It'll go away after the first few. Whoo, so pretty. It'll go away after the first few uses. And now it's time to place our lemon embeds. And so this is an eyeballing things. Like if you place them really closely together, make sure you are able to get the knife through. If you place them far apart, your bars are gonna just be bigger. So keep that in mind. I'm gonna go for probably about eight of them. We'll see what I get. And I'm trying to be even. This is really important, especially if you're selling your product. In fact, if you're selling your product and weight is important, a lot of soap makers will put little tiny Sharpie marks on exactly where they need to put these down as opposed to eyeballing them which makes a lot of sense because you want your bars to be consistent when you're making them for production. I'm making these for fun and for to show you how to make them. So I am not being as precise, but realistically I'll be able to get probably about eight to nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Yeah, here's eight. So that's just about perfect. Eight gorgeous bars, beautifully mounted. And now I'm gonna check on my green soap and see if it's ready to frost. Okay, so for our green, we waited at least 30 minutes, so don't stress if it's not hardening up. If you want to like play it really daredevil -y, you can put this in the freezer or the fridge and see if you can cool it off faster. Um, but really, what you wanna do is you wanna cut your frosting bag in a V, and then let's do just a little test. You kinda just do a little plop and squeeze, move back, squeeze, move back, squeeze, move back, and then you end up with a little leaf-like shape. Now you notice we only have eight little lemon, lemon pieces here to do, and we have a lot of green soap. So I want you to see how much extra we had from our earlier test batches. We literally had like all of this left over from our test batches. We let them harden and then you can just peel them off and use them in a future bar, a future batch of soap. So none of this is wasted. So have a really big block of kind of parchment paper or wax paper to do your your extra on because you, you can actually do an entire extra cool spring project with that. So now I'm gonna put this to the side, but I have it because I'm gonna not waste any of this soap. Move this over here and we're just going for a little leaf on each of these. So I'm gonna start a little bit further back and work my way to the front so that way you can see kind of the, so it's one squeeze, move back, one squeeze, move back, one squeeze, move back, and then pull it down. So it's blop, squeeze and move back, blop, squeeze and move back and pull down. And the key for this is that V cut that you did on your bag earlier. That really helps to make this leaf look more like a leaf that last one's the best one so far, yay. Um, and also keep in mind, you are your worst critic. I know I am for myself. Anybody that is looking at the soap is gonna be totally mesmerized and amazed. So this particular soap, I am not going to be putting on a heat pad because I don't want my melt and pour to melt. So this is just gonna sit out. I'm gonna spray it with 99% rubbing alcohol to help reduce any soda ash, but this is such a thick trace, we're not gonna get soda ash anyways. I'm gonna finish piping, and then I'm gonna let this sit for just a few days and then get ready to cut. So made this a couple days ago. I cannot wait to see the cut. You notice it came out very cleanly. And here we go, non-serrated knife and just gonna cut straight down. This first one's gonna be just a little bit big, but that's okay. Who doesn't love a big bar of soap? And pull up, not out, and twist off so we don't tear. And voila, this is gorgeous. I love the subtlety of the colors, and the swirl is so wispy and lovely. Mm -mm -mm. And this little topper is just perfect. And I really like how the lemon toppers really kind of space your bar for you. So this is still a pretty large bar of soap because of that extra topping, but it really looks fantastic. And I love that we have an accidental lemon in this first bar. It's like a literal actual lemon. Woohoo! 
So cute. These are awesome. I'm just gonna keep cutting and I'm gonna hand cut these and I would recommend you do the same because when you're using the wire cutters, it is pretty hard to get these perfectly placed so the wire doesn't slice a lemon in half, unless of course that's what you're going for. With these, make sure you let them dry and continue to cure and harden over a four to six week period and then they're ready to use, give away, or sell. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up below. Please subscribe to our channel. That way you're notified each and every time a new video comes out. And when you make this project, and I really, really hope you do, hashtag it Bramble On on all the socials so we can see it. You can inspire other crafters. And of course, the Bramble On hashtag is how we pick our maker of the month at brambleberry.com. So until next time, everyone, happy soaping.